Hey guys, Miss Butcher here. This video is all about the end behavior and the turning points of polynomial functions. All right, a few basic um, definitions before we go on. Uh, a monomial is a number of variable or a product of numbers and variables. So that means that um, I'm talking about 2x or 5x squared, because if I square something or cube something or whatever, I'm still multiplying, so that's still a product. Um, what wouldn't apply would be things like square roots um, or dividing by, um, things like that. Now a polynomial then is a monomial or a sum of monomials. So what we've been doing so far with linear functions and quadratic functions, those are polynomials. And we're going to add, and we've added cubic functions. Um, any, any of those powers will work because those are still products. And then standard form is when we write the polynomial with the terms in order from highest exponent to lowest. So a standard polynomial function is written in this format. f of x equals, and then n is going to be our highest power. So we have a sub n, which is just the coefficient that goes with the nth power, times x to the nth, n being whatever the highest power is. And then the next one would be the coefficient that goes with that next one, times x to the next lowest power, so if that n was a 4, then this one would be a 3, and so on, until we get to the coefficient with just x, and then the constant. So a few more vocabulary words for you. a sub n, that would be that first one, is the leading coefficient. So whenever you put your polynomial in standard form with the highest power first, the coefficient that goes with it, we call that the leading coefficient. So it's the one that comes first when it's in standard form. It must be a positive integer. All right, the n, this little n here, is the degree. So the highest power, the highest exponent of any one term in a polynomial. So if I give you a polynomial and it's got a whole bunch of different powers, the degree of it is the highest one. And then a sub 0, this one back here, that's the constant term. It doesn't have an x with it. It's the constant term. It won't change no matter what x is. All right, let's make a little table here. And um, we need three headings, degree, type, and example. And our degree, we're going to start with if we have a degree of 0. If I have no x's in my polynomial, all I have is y equals 5. We call it a constant. And so an example, I just said that, we'll go with f of x, though, to be more official, equals 5. Let's go one up now, the degree of 1. If our highest power is 1, so if I have y equals 2x, or 2x plus 3, or whatever, then that is linear. We learned about that at the beginning of the year. So an example would be f of x equals 2x plus 3, it doesn't have to have the plus 3. It could be 4x or 5x minus 2 or whatever, but the highest power is 1. All right, if we have a second power. We just did this chapter. These are quadratics. If x is squared, we have a quadratic. So an example would be f of x equals any quadratic you could think of. I don't know, 5x squared plus 8. Taking this a little further, if our degree was 3, if we had the highest power 3, that's a cubic. And a cubic might look like f of x equals um, 3x cubed. Or, and because I hadn't talked about this before, but this doesn't just have to be x. We could have y equals 2abc. It's got three variables in it, one, two, three. We would still consider that to be cubic, even though they're all different variables. Okay, after three comes four. And so if something was to the fourth power, we would call it quartic. For example, f of x equals, I don't know, um, 2x to the fourth minus 7x plus 1 as long as the highest power is 4. And once again, it doesn't just have to be x, so we could have something like y equals 9wx squared y. 
because that has one, two, three, four variables in it. So that would still be considered quartic. And then anything after four, we don't have a special name. Uh, we just call it fifth degree, sixth degree, seventh degree, and so on. All right, here are some examples. I want you to look at these, each of these, and tell me the degree, the type, and the leading coefficient. Degree, type, and leading coefficient. So if you want, you can hit pause and you can try them yourself, or you can just listen. All right, this first one, you look degree is always your highest power. And in this case, our highest power is 4, so our degree is 4. Type, well, a fourth degree is a, sorry, quartic. Um, and our leading coefficient is going to be the coefficient on the highest power, which in this case, there's not one there, so it is 1. Don't be a fool and put 0. It's 1. All right, the second one f of x equals 5x squared plus 3x to the negative 1 power minus x. So x to the negative 1 power, that's the same thing as 1 over x. And if you look back to our definition, a monomial is a number variable or product of numbers and variables. This is not a product. This is a quotient. So because it's not in that, um, it's not in that definition, this is not a polynomial at all. And it is a, it's a function, and we'll learn about these later, but it's not a polynomial. All right, the second one, I mean this third one then, we have 7x minus the square root of 3 plus pi x squared. And so some of you are looking at those weird symbols and thinking, okay, well then it's not a polynomial either because it's got all this weird stuff. But square root of 3 is just a simple number, and this is 7 times x, and pi is just a number. So this is a sum of monomials, which are numbers, variables, and products of numbers and variables. So our highest power is 2. That would be our degree. That would make it quadratic. And the leading coefficient, don't be fooled. It's not 7 just because the 7 is first. It's not what comes first. It's what goes on the highest power. Because if you were to put it in standard form, then that would go first. So our leading coefficient is pi. All right, and then the last one, g of x equals x plus 2 to the x power uh, minus 6x to the fifth power. If you look here, we have an x power. And so once again, that does not fall under the definition of polynomials. So this is not a polynomial. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is turning points, like what I did there, there with the turning in the letters. <laughs> All right, so basically the general rule is a polynomial of degree n has at most n minus 1 turns. So let's think about that. What we already know is our quadratics turn one time. That's one turn right there. Our cubics, they can turn twice, right? One, two. Now they don't have to necessarily turn twice. If you have this, you don't have any turns. Um, well, actually we do, but uh, it says at most. So it doesn't necessarily have that many turns. Um, we could have x to the fifth, and it could have one, two, three, four, five turns. But it could also just do like this. Um, so it might not necessarily have as many of those that. Uh, one, two, three, four. Sorry is what I meant to say, four turns. Um, but it will have at most n minus one turns. Okay, now the next thing we're going to talk about is end behavior. Now we've already learned about end behavior this year, so we know what it means and how to write it. Um, but for our polynomials, we've got some general rules that um, help you. You can just look at the equation and know what the end behavior is going to do without even seeing the graph. If So we're going to start with the sign of the leading coefficient. We're going to always look at that first. Is it positive or is it negative? If it's positive, you're going to go up on the right. So think about how our happy, our positive parabolas are always happy parabolas. Well, really, the positive really only controls the right side. So when it's positive, our right side is going up. Okay. If it's negative, our right side is going down. The negative controls only the right side. 
And that's what you look at first. What is the leading coefficient sign? So what does it do on the right? Then you look at the degree. And if the degree is even, so it's an x to the fourth or an x squared, or even if you've got three of these and one of these, that's an even um, total amount of x's. Even means the same on the left. And if you have an odd power, fifth power, or we've got three and two, that's five powers, um, however many, if it's an odd power, it's going to do the opposite on the left. So you have to know what the right's doing before you can determine what the left's doing. So same, up, up, or down, down, opposite. If it was up, then we'd be down. If it's down, we'd be up. So those are the general rules for end behavior. And you do know that you have to write it the way that you've been taught. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's end this with a few examples. First, I have f of x equals x to the fourth plus 3. So when I look at that, I can say that is quartic. And I know that because the degree is 4. It has a leading coefficient of 1. And that's a positive number, positive 1. So that means it goes up on the right. So I can write my end behavior as x approaches infinity, the right, f of x approaches infinity, up. Now my degree is even. Even means the same. So it's also going to go up on the left. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. And then I might ask you, and how many turns could that have? And you would tell me that that has, at most, 3. Because 4 minus 1 is 3 turns. So let's try this one. f of x equals x plus 2x cubed. That is cubic. I know that because the degree is 3. Even though the first x has a 1 power, the highest power that we have is 3. Our leading coefficient is 2, because when I put it in the right order, that 2 would come first. Um, now it's a positive 2, so that means it's going to go up on the right. You don't have to write up right, you have to write as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. Now, the degree this time is odd, and odd means opposite. So, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches the opposite of positive infinity, which is negative infinity. And this is cubic, so it's going to have, at most, two turns, because 3 minus 1 is 2. Here we have f of x equals negative x to the fifth plus 2. So this would be fifth degree. Some people might say quintic. I don't know if that's real or not. Um, because it has a degree of 5, the leading coefficient is negative 1. See that negative there? That means the leading coefficient is negative 1. And a negative leading coefficient means that it's going to go down on the right. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Now the degree is odd. Odd means opposite. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x 
is approaching the opposite of negative, so positive infinity. And this would have, at most, four turns. Well, more, g of x equals negative x minus 3 all squared, x minus 7 all to the fourth. So this one is in factored form. So we're going to look for the degree, and we're going to count the highest power. We've got x to the second power, so there's two x's, and x to the fourth power. So I've got six total x's. That would make this sixth degree. Ooh, I changed to pink somehow. And the degree, again, is six. So that's an even number. We'll save that knowledge for later. The leading coefficient. It's hard to see when it's in factored form, but if I were to FOIL all this out and all this out, I don't have any coefficients with the x's, so that would stay a 1, and then this negative would make it negative 1. So my negative 1 tells me I'm going down on the, on the right. So as x approaches infinity, g of x approaches negative infinity. And the even means the same. So as x approaches negative infinity, g of x approaches the same negative infinity. Oh, people keep interrupting me today. All right, and then this is sixth degree, so this would have at most five turns. All right, I'm done. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.